Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. I am wearing the Tosca dress and the ET, and I'm wearing the Tosca dress for a couple of reasons which I'll talk about later, but mostly because it's really hot here. And so I know it is in a lot of places across the country, so it just feels great to have all this air running through my, uh, under my dress, and it just, I feel really comfortable in this. But I have a lot of announcements. It feels like announcement day almost before, um, instead of anything else. I always start out our Facebook Lives and our YouTube Lives with um, some notes about So Confident for the Month. So in August, we are using the Riviera shirt pattern, which normally has a collar and a stand, just a couple of buttons, uh, simple sleeves, simple back, but long sleeves, and we're turning it into this garment. That's our focus this year, is taking patterns and remaking them. That is the title of our So Confident year. This is what we've done to it. I love the short sleeves with the cup. We changed the collar from a standing collar to a nice little mandarin collar. Same crossover of left front over right front, but instead of just one button, we've added a couple more. And we've done some top stitching so that everything is in place, and now it's more like a tunic because you put it on over your head. The back is still quite simple. This is a fabric that is uh, printed and made in Denmark, and it comes in three colors. So this is one of the kits. And we have two other colors. We have black and white, and a sienna red, and the same, I should call it off-white, really. It's not quite white. But all the kits uh, contain enough fabric to make any size, the buttons that you need. We've even included an extra button in this kit and some thread. So pretty much all you need to make, well, you need a sewing machine and all that. But uh, anyway, the materials that you need are in this kit. And the video explains a lot of things. So hope, hopefully you will sign up for the month. Sign up to take the Riviera uh, pullover class, or you'll sign up for the year, and you'll get all the classes up at this point, including this month. And then you'll get all the rest of them for the rest of the year. So we'll be using... Can we um, do a mic change? Sure. Because somebody said they're saying that the mics aren't working. Okay. Um, so let's see if we can... We're do a mic change. Yeah. And can you I'll double... Right yeah. Can you double check that yours is on? How about a mic? <laughs> I have no mic. Oh. That might be why. No, that's not the right one. Hopefully this is better. Um, Aaron can check that, I think, or someone can check it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> we have mics all over the place here. <laughs> so sorry about that. I didn't even have a mic on, so that may be uh, the difference. So hopefully we can. Um, I, I, don't, I won't go over what I just did, but I was talking about So Confident and the garment for this month. I'm assuming that uh, they could hear you, just they could tell your mic wasn't on. Got it. OK. Or it wasn't near you, at least. Then She's going to, that babe's going to go over there in the corner. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, we have a little bit of the cat fabric left, not very much. But this is just such fun, fun fabric. And last week, Alex did a nice presentation from Cleveland. And she made a nine live shirt using this cotton fabric. This is the shirt pattern. Simple, it's a great summer, I call it the upscale camp shirt because it does have a slanted hem. It has one shoulder seam that is one inch longer. The left shoulder seam is one inch longer than the right shoulder seam, sort of balanced against this shorter side here. So it's, it's more interesting than it at first appears, but it's so simple to make. And she made it out of this beautiful, beautiful, uh, smooth, lovely, cotton fabric with cats on it. And we have a fish button that goes with the kit. It's so cute. Uh, you get, I don't know how many, uh, three or four of the regular buttons, and then you get a fish button with the kit. Or you can buy the yardage, either one. So there's a little bit left. We're keeping this on sale for the rest of the week, uh, just to give you an opportunity to pick up the cat fabric. I actually ha uh, took some of this home, and I'm going to make 
uh, pajamas. I'm gonna make a simple top uh, with some buttons and uh, some short, I'm gonna take my West End pants and make some elastic waist shorts, minus the pockets and all of that, and I just think it's gonna make some cute pajamas. So, nine lives, still on sale for another week. We have some events I wanna talk about. Coming up in October, October 12th to be exact, we have the privilege of uh, Natalie Channon of Alabama Channon coming to Topeka to do a trunk show and uh, talk. That is a Thursday night, or is it? I think it is a yes. Thursday night, yes. And we're having it at our local Cyrus Hotel, which is a very, very cool hotel in downtown Topeka. And she's gonna be setting up with her trunk show and I will be there with her. There will be things to buy, kits and fabric and other things that Alabama Channon is all about. If you're not familiar with either Natalie Channon or Alabama Channon, Natalie Channon is really world renowned for her efforts in sustainability. All of her fabrics, which are a cotton knit, every single aspect of that fabric is produced in the United States. The cotton is grown in the United States, the fabric is manufactured in the United States, and it's dyed in the United States. And she is the only one that I know of who is doing that with knits. And then she designs a line of uh, a collection of garments uh, seasonally uh, based on these color schemes that she comes up. I've been in her office space before and it's really fascinating to see her board that she's working on. It's kind of a mood board that goes I think it starts with images and particularly nature, and then she pulls from that and comes up with her beautiful colors and collections for the season. These garments are then either manufactured in her facility there, uh, so you can buy the garments, ready-made and machine-made, or there are hand-sewn garments by artisans in the Florence, Alabama area who <clears throat> take the fabric and go home and do some embellishing and bring the garment back and then she pays them for their work. Or you can buy a kit. She also has workshops, but she's very interesting. Uh, you might wanna check her out on The Moth, which is a wonderful podcast, and she tells her story on The Moth. But she's gonna come here and talk about her story and talk about her clothes. I thought I would bring, uh, show you a few of the garments that I've made from her workshops. I seem to have a lot of skirts that I've made from her kits. So this is an example of what we call reverse applique. So there are two layers of knit here of the same color, and the top layer has been stenciled, which they do at the factory. And then you stitch by hand using a very particular thread around the stencil outline, and then you cut away the interior. So it gives this dimensional look. It's really incredibly beautiful and interesting and fun to make. And it's the kind of thing that you tra I travel with it. These skirts that I've made have probably have thousands of miles on them because I always have a bundle of hand sewing and uh, using my Alabama Channa techniques. Raw edges, uh, interesting stitching on waistbands and so forth. This is one particular stencil. This is another one, perhaps a more contemporary stencil, but again, the background is a black knit and the top layer is navy. And it was stitched with navy thread on the stencil and then cut away to expose the black. Just a couple of skirts. I counted this morning, I think I have about 10 skirts. So over the years, I've made a lot of skirts. And then sometimes I will just take some of the scraps and make one of our garments. This is an ET, and I used some scraps. A couple of these I actually stenciled myself. I went to one of her stenciling workshops in Florence, Alabama, learned how to stencil. I also learned that I will never do that on my own. Uh, it was fun, it was great, and if you're interested in that, it's a really great way to learn it. But nevertheless, I used the scraps and I just pieced a section of the ET. So this ET was put together all by hand. So I've made garments while riding in the car, riding in airplanes, in hotel rooms, and so forth. So you can sew garments without having to be at a sewing machine, and it's really, really fun. 
So she will have an entire trunk show that evening of her garments. And I think it's going to be a really fun evening. The evening costs $50, and it, that includes, of course, her presentation and her interview by me, and then uh, also uh, uh, drinks and hors d'oeuvres and a nice setting. So you can sign up for that on our website. We hope to see you. Uh, I think it starts at, I'm not sure, 6 o'clock maybe, something like that? I'll have to look. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, OK. And if you want to stay all night, uh, you're welcome to stay right there at the Cyrus Hotel, which is where this particular event is going to be. So check that out. Really looking forward to having Natalie Channon here. I ve feel very privileged that she um, asked us to host this event. She has a new book out, which she will be talking about, and have the books there for signing. If you already own some of her books, I know you could bring them, and she will sign them there. So the next event is a, an event in Cleveland, Ohio. So Alex lives in Cleveland. And we decided that I would fly to Cleveland. Of course, it's an excuse to see Alex, but it's also an excuse to uh, teach an event. And we've rented a really beautiful, lovely space there uh, in a church, basically. But it's one of their community spaces. Lots of light, gorgeous space. And we are going to be doing a knit workshop. It's three days with an evening before uh, event at Alex's beautiful con uh, house uh, near the water in Cleveland on Lake Erie. And we'll be meeting and greeting there and sharing some ideas and maybe showing some clothes and that sort of thing. But the next day, we're going to start in and actually sew. So the experience is all related to sewing on knits. And we're going to use two different kinds of knits. The first thing you're going to make is a t-shirt. And we're going to use the ET pattern, which of course comes in lots of sizes, from extra small to XXL, and then 1X to 5X. This is the ET. It's also the T I have on. It seems to be the T that I use a lot. Um, but we're going to use jersey. And jersey is the fabric that curls. So I want to teach you, and Alex wants to teach you, how to tame that and work with that curl. And there are tips and tricks that uh, allow you to uh, sew knits really easily. Uh, we're going to le learn how to use, uh, do our signature ready-to-wear binding. You're going to use the fusy web to do really clean, finished hems. And of course, we'll be doing a lot of fitting. We'll have all the sizes there for you to try on and get a starting point for how to fit you. And then you'll leave with a great t-shirt that fits you. And it will be paired with the next project, which is the Helix Pants. So the Helix Pants are a slim leg pant that will have you make out of Ponte. Now, Ponte is another knit that does not curl. It is a double weave, an interlock uh, construction. So it is quite easy to work with, but can be a little bit intimidating. Uh, the whole knit thing can be if you've never really worked with knits. So we're going to teach you how to sew on Ponte knit, how to install this elastic waistband. And of course, it's all about fit again. And we have uh, all the sizes of this pattern available to try on as well, again, for a starting point. But we will be tweaking the fit and spending uh, personal time with you to get a good fitting pattern. So you're going to make a knit ensemble, a top and a bottom, and you will leave in three days with finished garments. For the ET, the ET is a short sleeve shirt, but we'll teach you how to lengthen the sleeve, make a long sleeve, and you can do any length sleeve that you want. You can uh, do any length of ET that you want, or any variation if you're feeling bold. So check us out. That is November 8th through 11th at, in Cleveland, Ohio, and I hope to see you there. Now the next event that we are just beginning to promote as of yesterday is our long-awaited event in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So I've been to Santa Fe a couple of times in the last couple of years, actually for painting workshops, and I fell in love with the city again. I had been there 30, 40 years ago, hadn't been there since, and I realized how special that place is. If you've never been to Santa Fe, it is like no other place in the United States. It's, its cultural influence uh, is 
unbelievable. And of course, it's the home of incredible museums, the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum, the Folk Art Museum. It's an amazing place. The shopping is, I think, the best anywhere. You can't beat it. I can name about 10 stores right off the top of my head where you can shop and look at beautiful, beautiful, interesting, artistic, wearable clothes. So we have rented a, a lovely space in the La Fonda Hotel, which is downtown. Santa Fe is centered around a, a, a center plaza, and the La Fonda is the oldest hotel there right on the corner of that. So we're in the heart of, San, of Santa Fe. Uh, La Fonda is an old, old hotel, but it's quite new and refreshed and beautiful. And we have a really good rate that we've secured for you for uh, an evening, a night uh, rental on um, rooms. And then we have this uh, five day, five and a half day workshop. It's about five days actually. We start on Sunday uh, with a, a meet and greet, uh, again, some food and drinks. And then the next four days we are working continuously in the daytime on our projects. And then Friday is a little bit of a shortened day, but lunches are included and a dinner and all that stuff. You can read about everything on the website. But I wanted to show you an example of some of the projects that you'll be working on. We're calling this the Fractured Jacket Workshop. And this is a, a genre of sewing that we've been working on for a long time. We had a Fractured Jacket Workshop in Topeka a couple of years ago. We had a Fractured in France Jacket Workshop in France last summer. And Samantha Plo is part of the teaching team that will be going there, and she has made, I don't know, I've lost track, six, eight, ten jackets that are very colorful and very interesting uh, with the techniques. So we've borrowed some of the concepts actually from Alabama Channon. And so when we say fractured, we mean layered jackets uh, that have some applique, reverse applique, or strip piecing. But this is an artistic, uh, expression using either the Chicago jacket or the London shirt. So this is the uh, Chicago jacket and this is an applique technique where you have a base fabric, in this case it's linen, and then you have these patches of raw edge uh, fabrics that are applied to the surface and then they're, they're applied with some machine stitching but then embellished with some additional hand stitching in a long running stitch. So this is the plaza jacket in an applique technique. Chicago jacket. Did I say plaza? Mm -hmm. Where'd that come that's from? A, that took Ooh, you back. That's, that's an oldie but goodie. <laughs> I've been thinking about bringing it back. Is why, wow, I don't even know why I said that. I think I said Santa Fe Plaza. Maybe I'll, I'll give myself some room for making that mistake. All right, so this is uh, reverse applique, which is the technique that I just talked about on the skirts with Alabama Channon. So the base fabric of this jacket is white wool, and then a layer of black jacquard silk was placed over the top of it. With a long ruler, you draw some lines, you st stitch on those lines, and then you cut away to expose uh, the white. It's, it's like a stained glass kind of technique. These are meant to be ravelly. It's part of the uh, charm of this jacket. This happens to be the London shirt as a jacket. Uh, we've used some snap tape for the closure, which is an option. So this is the second technique that you have the option of using in Santa Fe. And the third option is the stripped piecing. Again, this is two layers of fabric. The base layer of this is a, a chocolate wool crepe. And then this is a knit fabric that was an all over spotted sort of animal print uh, fabric. And then it was cut into strips, shifted, and placed back down on the fabric and then stitched in some parallel rows in a grid uh, motif. So those are the three techniques. We'll have lots of jacket samples, uh, winter, summer, colorful, uh, darker, whatever. We will also have kits for you. That's an option. We will give you a, a complete materials list, of course, uh, but you will, we will also have kits if you're a little bit stumped as to what you're going to do. I actually have a jacket, which I'll show you at some point, that has all three of those 
uh, techniques in one jacket, and it's a longer London uh, shirt. And it's, I, think it's, I think it's pretty cool. So I hope you'll join us. That is Santa Fe, February 8th through 11th. Um, and you fly into Albuquerque, I think. That even though there's an airport in Santa Fe, Albuquerque has more options. I make your way via shuttle or car or whatever to Santa Fe, which is about 50 minutes away. Check into the La Fonda, find the sewing workshop team. There will be four of us there to work with you. So you'll have plenty of personal help. And you can find out all the details about this event on the website. We have just a few spots left. It opened up yesterday, but we do have a few spots. So I hope you'll grab one of those. And there's also a companion price if you want to bring someone. Uh, maybe you're driving, you want a driver, uh, and you can, uh, that person can attend uh, some of the excursions we're going to do to a gallery, to a museum, uh, dinner, and so forth. So read about that and check it out in Santa Fe, New Mexico, February 2024, just the month where we're all looking for something to do to get out of the doldrums of post-holiday and winter weather. All right, um, my stash fabric for the week is this beautiful Ecot cotton. And there's a lot here. There is three and a half yards plus a long tail of about a half of a width of another yard and a half or so. So this is a, a, a piece of fabric that I think is jacket weight, uh, it's not, it could be made into a certain kind of shirt, but this, is, this has some uh, heft to it, but it's a traditional uh, ecot that I can't remember where I bought, but I know I used it because half of it's gone. So a good piece of fabric with lots of options because of its size, three and a half uh, yards. It is, I believe, um, uh, 45 inches wide, and I'm selling this for $45 for the piece and the shipping is included. All you have to do is email me at linda at sewingworkshop.com. <clears throat> excuse me, tell me you want it. And it's the first person who tells me they want it that gets it. And we will PayPal you or Venmo you or something. We'll, we'll get your money somehow. $45. All right, but today is talking about Tosca dresses. And the way this came about is Linda Wardlow, who helps us out <clears throat> pretty often, actually, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, was in here a couple of weeks ago, and again, it was a hot day, and she had on this Tosca dress. Now, Linda Wardlow is shorter than I am. I don't know exactly how tall she is, but I'm going to guess like 5'1", 5'2", something like that, and just as cute as can be. And she had this on, and she looked so fantastic. I said, you have to leave that here. Well, she didn't leave it, but she brought it back. Uh, and I'm, I'm featuring it today because it's one of those patterns that, you know, we had for a while and then we discontinued it and then we brought it back and now it's a digital pattern. And it reminds me of how fun it is to make because it has some really, really unusual elements to it. That's Linda's and I'm going to put this one out here because I think with this one you can see some of the details a little bit better. So this is a, a cotton shirting. And the pockets are a deep pocket on the diagonal that are like a cargo pocket. So there's some dimension to them. And then there's also an accent piece, a triangular shaped accent piece on this pocket. So with a stripe, something like this, you get all these angles going on the pocket. And the pocket is nice and deep and actually useful. There are other pockets up here Again, this is, these are placed on the diagonal, even though they're cut on the straight of grain. And yes, they're pockets. I don't know that you would use them as such, but it does add a really nice uh, feature to the garment. In this case, the facing of the neckline and the arm's eye is a contrasting fabric, which is fun to do. The hem is one of its more interesting features. The hem is very deep. It's about six inches. And so you turn the hem up, and then you shift it, and that creates this soft, almost bubble hem. And I think that really makes it fun. If you don't like that feature, of course, you can just turn it straight up and stitch it, but I think that's what adds to the look of this garment. We actually illustrate the garment without these two tucks. 
But I like these tucks, and they are in the pattern. So it's easy to just bring these up, top stitch them, and create that whole ruched, big ruched look on the bottom of the Tosca. It's a fun dress. People ask me all the time if you can add sleeves to this. You can see that this is a really deep armhole. And I have not been successful in doing that. I'm not saying it can't be done, but you would definitely have to close up the arm's eye and add a sleeve, and I am not particularly sure how you would do that. So if you're not interested in wearing a cami underneath, which is, of course, an option, because you do need to fill in this space, I generally wear it with a t-shirt. And in my case, I'm wearing it with an ET. In the winter time, this looks great with leggings and boots. But for summer, it's air. So this is the Tosca. The back of it is fairly plain. But as you can see, it looks good in the shirting weight fabric. This is a cotton fabric that Linda made. And the one I have on is also a cotton fabric. We have them in wool. We have them in linen. We have lots of uh, options of how they have been made in the vault, as we call it. But I brought out the cotton ones because they felt summery. I would say that Linda might, may have shortened hers now that I look at this. Maybe not. Anyway, uh, a fun, fun dress. So I'm going to show you some fabrics that I think work really, really well with the Tosca dress and a couple of other garments as well. Um, this is the beginning of a three-week sale of a group of fabrics. This week is prints. And we have almost 40 fabrics on sale at 50% off right away. So these are fabrics that we're not going to get again. We don't have much left of really any of them. But it's an opportunity for us to uh, you know, have our summer sale, which uh, I don't know that we've always done, but we're going to this time break it into groups. So next week will be a different group of uh, fabrics, and the following week, diff different group of fabrics as well, all of which will be 50% off. So this is the first of the big summer sale. So I'm going to go through each one of them because they have interesting characteristics. I don't have all 37 to 40 fabrics on the wall. I only have about 10 or 12 or something like that. But all of the rest of them are on the website, and they're all on sale at 50% off. So you're going to have to go to the website to check out the entire range of what is on sale. So this is really an interesting fabric. It has a file texture to it. It's rayon and cotton, and it's sold in panels in a sense in that uh, the, the scale of the star uh, type blocks shift from smaller to larger. So the actual uh, panel is 27 inches. And you can see it's a wide fabric. So this would be really fun for a Tosca dress or a, a light jacket, uh, something like that. They even make great pants. But the texture is, if you can imagine, like a file. If you, if you know what moiré is or a silk file, something like that, it has that texture. But it is rayon and cotton. Um, I would probably consider cutting this out on the vertical. Maybe not. It's not really a stripe, but there is a stripe element to it. But I look at fabrics in two ways a lot as to whether I can cut them out on the straight of grain uh, lengthwise or crosswise. And I cut a lot of things out crosswise. And you know, I'll hang the fabric up in front of a mirror and I'll see if the drape is different. If there's something about the drape that's wrong, then I'm not going to consider cross grain. But the reason I know this would be uh, pretty good on cross grain is the ribs go this way. So that tells me this is going to hang a little bit skinnier on the cross grain than on the um, lengthwise grain. Okay. When I first looked at this, um, I thought this might have been silk, but it's not. It is viscous rayon, and it is a really interesting print that has a concentrated uh, blue painterly side to it and a lighter end to it. This would be really interesting on the cross grain with the light to the dark particularly on a Tosca dress. And this is the kind of dress that, yes, you could wear it because of its content, viscose, every day. But you could dress this up just a little bit, too. And if you wanted to go someplace kind of fun, maybe a luncheon or a dinner or whatever, you know, wear something that has a little bit of a shine to it, nice drape to it. This also is in panels. And it's a 51-inch panel. 
So don't be afraid of a of fabric just because it says it's in panels. There are lots of interesting things to do with panels, but you do have to purchase it in panels. So the 51 inches is, what's that, a, a yard and three quarters or something like that, or a yard and five eighths. So think about that as you are uh, deciding what you want to make. This is poplin, cotton poplin. This is very much the weight of the dress that uh, Linda Wardlow made her Tosca. We've been talking about poplin all summer. Poplin is the most popular fabric this summer uh, for pants, tops, shirts, jackets, anything. Uh, this is that exact fabric that everybody is wearing, poplin. It has a paisley look to it in the red and the blue, uh, floral paisley, but it's a nice weight of cotton and it's all cotton. I don't believe there's anything else in it. All cotton. Now this, at first I thought this was a lightweight ponte, but it's not, it's lighter than that. This looks a little heavier than it really is. Uh, this has a slight amount of stretch to it. And the stretch, this is a polyester, nylon, and spandex. That's kind of why I thought it was a knit, but it's not, it's a woven. It has a little bit of stretch, but notice the stretch is on the vertical. So if you're gonna use something like this for a dress like this, it doesn't matter which way you cut it. But if you're gonna use something like this for pants, then of course you want to definitely cut this on the cross grain so the stretch is going around you. This, these two on the bottom reminded me of uh, what Linda Wardlow used in that they are kind of graphic, uh, this is kind of a pop art motif, uh, interesting uh, collage, montage of eyes and some lips and just some other really wonderful geometrics in grays and taupes, deep taupes and white. And then the one on the bottom kind of reminds me of, of marbleization, marble, granite, that sort of thing. The, the motif is nothing that you would have to match. It's sort of random, but there is a, a, a nice flow of the motif to it. Kind of swirly. Has a very Asian look to it. Very lightweight cotton. Really would be great for a shirt or the Tosca dress. Then over here, we have two cottons that are would describe as quilt cotton weight. That always seems to be a, a pretty descriptive word for these two. This is a floral, like a chrysanthemum with some leaves, and this is just a random uh, kind of marbleized texture as well. This is the other colorway of this fabric, the cotton and viscose. And again, two scales of the diamonds and stars beautiful color combination of, of uh, camel and green. This green is everywhere. I am seeing this on all of the websites. Doesn't matter whether it's high end, medium weight, and low end, whatever, that green is the green of the season for sure. The next one is uh, a panel fabric. It's like a scarf panel. Each panel is 32 inches square. It is viscose, so what do you do with something like this? I mean, it just seems like that's impossible. This has a slight, very slight crepey texture to it, but it's super nice and drapey. So I found this picture of a shirt, a blouse, and I think this is the perfect kind of fabric to do something with. So you would cut each front out of each panel. This would be a front, this would be a front, this would be a sleeve, this would be a sleeve, and then the back could have this stripe down the center back, or you could cut the back out of the center and then do some sort of embellishment or cut another strip to cover that up if you don't like that stripe. So I think that would make a fantastic, fantastic blouse. Did I say what that was? It's viscose. The next one is Rayon, 70% rayon and 30% linen. Super drapey, that's what the rayon does for this and there's just enough linen in it to give it a texture, but it's not wrinkly like linen. Beautiful colors, deep rich colors, gorgeous 
uh, Auburn background with the reds and greens and so forth. I can see that in the Tosca. Now this one is a sleeper. When you look at this on the bolt, you see this in and it's a plaid. And then you open it up and you have three plaids in this very uh, contemporary geometric pattern. So that would make a fantastic dress. That is viscose, I think. Better check. Yes, 100% viscose. So those are a sampling of the fabrics that are on sale today in addition to the other 30 or so that are on the website. So uh, I want to show you uh, two other garments that we're featuring this week that I think any of these fabrics would look good in. The splice top looks great in a print. And of course the splice top is the garment that has the splices down the side. And in this fabric, we use the same print for the splices, so you don't see that particularly as an accent or a feature, but it, it could be all the same fabric or you could insert a solid color or a stripe or something. And then the gardenia dress is another great summer piece. Dress and top. Both of these look really great in prints. And there are some linen prints on the sale as well. I didn't pull them for the wall, but uh, there are some great linen prints that are available. Both of these happen to be linen. All right, do we have any questions? Yes, I'm gonna get a full length of you so they All can right. see the dress. Okay. I'll put my hands in my pocket and give you the pose. There we go. Of course, with her famous sneakers. Yeah. Her trainers. Yeah, this hits me later. about just above mid-calf, I think, which is, it feels good. The length feels good on me. And then somebody else also had a question about the Santa Fe trip, just verifying dates. So I'm going to put the dates back up here for you guys. All right. It's February 8th through 11th. Well, that's not right. It must be the 12th. February 11th through the 16th. Oh, sorry about that. Is that, Is that right? different than what you had? Very different than what I had. <laughs> <laughs> but that's correct. I'm wrong. 11th through 16th. I don't know why I had 8 through 11. That's not even a full week. That's the November. That's your Cleveland. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, we'll That's just, probably what's wrong. I can't find my piece of paper with the dates on it. So. Here's to clear that up. So, yeah, so the Cleveland, November 8 through 11. Okay. Santa Fe is 11 through? The 16th. 16th. Okay, yes. sorry about yes. that. So one's in this November. Numbers and I just don't get along <laughs> <laughs> in any, any form. So Cleveland, November 8th through 11th. Santa Fe, February 11th through the 16th, 2024. Okay. Okay. Did you lengthen um, your Tosca dress that you're wearing and how tall are you? I'm 5'6 and I did not lengthen this. This is the length and the pattern. If you wanted to lengthen it, could you? Oh, absolutely. You could, you could lengthen it any number of inches that you want. There, I haven't looked at the pattern for a while. I'm hoping there are length and short lines on the pattern. I Usually think are. So too. <laughs> and then somebody else wanted to know if you could shorten it. Yes, uh, you can. Same thing. So would the proportions work if you're lengthening it and shortening it? How do you think the proportions would, would end up? Well, I've seen it shortened a lot. Uh, Kathy Miller, my friend up in um, Wisconsin, has shortened it. It looks great. I don't know that I've ever seen a lengthened one, but I don't know why it wouldn't work. I think it, the proportions on you is what you have to decide. It should work. Someone did ask if we had a blog on how to lengthen it, and we don't. No, uh, we did not. But I, I can't imagine that there's anything too mysterious about it. You know, you want to put the pockets 
basically in the same place. Even if you're lengthening or shortening it in the pocket area, you want to keep you want to keep the pockets that are comfortable for you right here. So that might require, you know, pin fitting the tissue to just to see where the pockets are going to lie on you. And what is the fabric content of the montage face fabric and also the one beneath it? These are both cottons. 100% cotton. 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 Both of them are cotton. Nothing else added. So do you have the tucks on your Tosca? I do. I have the tucks on my Tosca. All of these have the tucks, I believe. I'm not sure we have one that doesn't. Um, I'd have to look in our vault, but yeah, the tucks are in mine. I think that's what gives that, this hem uh, some interest even more. I like the, the fact that that raises that in the center front. Do you have info on cutting out viscose and rayon wovens? Do I have information on that? Well, you want to cut out single layer because it is a fabric that moves around. So you want to cut out on as big a surface as you have, and you want to line up your selvage along an edge, a line, and then you want to find the straight of grain on the, uh, the end by either pulling a thread or tearing, whatever the fabric will do. And then you just continue to really, really, really be precise about that straighted grain, getting that end on a line, getting the selvage on a line, weighting things down, not letting the fabric hang off the table, either at the end or the side. It's very important to cut out single layer and carefully. And then I weight my, fa <coughs> excuse me, I weight my fabric. I cut out with a rotary cutter because I don't want to use, <coughs> do you have any water over there? Um, it's mine. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like I swallowed a bug or something. I don't think we have bugs in here. Thank you. Um, so if you use scissors when you cut out, you're raising the fabric, you're moving the fabric. So the idea, and even if you're pinning the fabric, you are lifting it and shifting it. So once I get it absolutely perfectly placed, and I spend a lot of time getting that straight grain placed. Then you want to put your tissue down on that or your paper, whatever you're using, weight it, and then cut out with a rotary cutter. But it, it's, you have to be in the mood. You know, you have to be patient and you have to pay attention to your straight grain. And then once you've cut out your whole section, you start again. And hopefully you can establish a new straight grain at the end before you move the fabric and get a straight grain established again or at least go to the other end and establish the, the straight of grain and start at the other end. Can you raise the armholes? Well, you can, sure. When you see the pattern piece of this, you'll understand why um, it is probably not that easy to add a sleeve, but yes, the pattern piece does have a big opening for the arm's eye, and you can shorten that if you want to. I don't see any other questions. Okay. So one of the things we have on sale this week is a tutorial that is one of the ones that basically I've worked on for a long time. It's called, <laughs> what is it called? My sheet of paper is gone. Oh, um, I'm going to look on our sale page instead of tutorial. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> skills. Um, oh. <laughs> well, I never remember the name of this. Good question because it's not, we need to add it to our sale category. <laughs> Oh, it should be on our sale category. Um, Betsy will take care of that, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's about, it has the word skill in it. It's really up, upgrading your skills. And well, here, I've got it right here, I think. Fine tune your sewing skills. Thank you, fine tune your sewing skills, yes. <laughs> so that's it. a 75 page PDF tutorial that has a, 
so many of the signature techniques of the sewing workshop. And one of the things I encourage you to do is to purchase something like that where you get lots and lots of techniques, lots of which have been pulled from other PDF tutorials, print them off, and then start a library. You know, I, I, I know my daughter is rolling her eyes right now. Printed, library, whatever. But it's so easy, really, to print it off and keep a notebook and then begin to, you have it right here of everything you need. 75 pages of great techniques. Signature sewing workshop techniques. So that is on sale this week, hopefully soon. <laughs> Uh, there's a couple more questions. Okay. Um, if you purchase two yards of the blue gray swirl, is it one yard or a 52 inch panel? Of, of this one? Yes. You're going to get two panels. So that is two 51 inch panels if you purchase two. Right. Yeah. So on the website, it does say just so it says one, two, three. Um, right. So you're buying have, a panel. Right, right. So if you click on one, you get one panel. Yeah. Correct. That's 51 inches long. Okay. There's another question here. Oh, um, could you make the Tosca in a knit fabric? Yes, you could make the Tosca in a knit fabric, but I wouldn't make it in a super tissue weight, droopy, drapey knit. I would make it out of something that has a little body, maybe a cotton knit, lightweight ponte, uh, interlock, something like that. Don't make it too, it'll collapse and I think some of the elements just won't have the same look. So be careful about the knit, but sure, no problem on a knit. Um, can you add a sleeve to the gardenia? Um, a long sleeve for the gardenia? Uh, let me look at this a minute. Oh, they fell down. Ah. All right, so there are two versions in the pattern, sleeveless and a sleeve like this. You can lengthen this sleeve. This, I don't think this would ever be a successful super long sleeve dress, but yes, you can definitely lengthen the sleeve. Does the um, book on sale this week include techniques not in previous So Confident years? So I think she means the tutorial on sale. You know, I'm sure that most of those techniques that are in that number, that one tutorial, are spread out through so many of the other videos and PDFs that you, if you have every year, you're going to have it. This just consolidates it into one place. And just to clarify, it is a, a digital tutorial. It is a, um, yes, it is not a video. And it's not a book. Um, and it's not a book. Make a book. But. You can make a book. <laughs> no, you have to print it out. It's a digital presentation that you can either uh, put in a file on your computer or print it out and keep it, or both. I'm intrigued by the triple plaid fabric. Could you talk a little more about its use and possible patterns to use? Say that again. The, what? the triple, she's called it the triple plaid. Oh, that one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. So, I don't know why that doesn't want to hang up. Um, all right. This is the kind of piece that weight wise can make top or bottom. So, it could be a skirt, it could be pants, it could be a dress, it could be a blouse. It could be a loose, flowy jacket. I think there's not much you can't make out of this. But I actually see this because of its scale. I like it as the Tosca or the Gardenia or something like that. But I also think it would make a great London shirt, Florence shirt, Frankie shirt, a bigger shirt, not a small, uh, a small shirt, <laughs> a, a little shirt. Um, like if I were going to make the now shirt, for example, which is short, I would lengthen it, make it tunic. This to me is a longer piece, a, a statement piece. I could see this though as a beautiful and interesting Ikena jacket, Ikena 2 jacket, uh, sort of kimono-like. That'd be pretty cool. Um, I can't find the pop art fabric on the website. What was the fiber content? This one? Um, 
the fiber content is a, um, cotton, and the number is 5922-1. Maybe Betsy can find it for you. Yeah, I'm sure she can link in the comments. Okay. I don't see any other questions. All right. So, big fabric sale this week, 50% off. Fine tune your sewing skills. Tutorial is on sale. Lots of events coming up. Alabama Channon in October. Um, Cleveland in November, Santa Fe in February, and we have lots of events planned for 2024 as well. So stay tuned and also stay tuned for big sale next week and the week after that as well. You want to do one more mention of the Riviera since we, sure. um, just in case people weren't on in the beginning. Yeah, so this is them. this month's So Confident project using the Riviera shirt, which starts out like this. and we turn it into this. It's sewn down, we've added some buttons, changed the collar, shortened the sleeve, and added a cuff. Okay, and yardage is now available. Yes, yardage is now available. Yardage is now available in all three of the colorways of this fabric, plus yardage is available for the cat fabric. Okay. Okay. All right, well thank you for joining me, and we will see you next week. <laughs>